Hello, hello, welcome. Slime Stream 50. We are in space. I am Invisiman. Nice to meet you. Just kidding, I'm Dripman, and we are here to get down. You submitted your tracks. We have about 14 now. We have a couple more slots left. And we're going to see how your song sounds. We're going over sound design, arrangement, mixing, mastering, everything you need to succeed. Let's see what we got going on. First submission is called Glory. And it's going to be from, scroll on down, Crit. Crit, Glory. He said, oh, okay, he said he changed the SoundCloud profile. Okay, we're good. Let's go. We're good.
glory. All right, cool. Let's create with glory. You know what it is. We got some bass house to start it off. Lots of choir in it. We have lots of different vibes in this, honestly. We have like... So we have like hip-hop, trap, drums with choirs. And then the choirs transition to like UK grime rap. The differences in, in timbres, like the soft, melodic, spiritual of human voices that are the choirs is a whole different vibe than like this rapping going on. It's like not dark, you know? So I would try to match the energy that you're presenting here with these vocals because the vocal really is the main instrument here. And you want to try to match the energy that he's rapping with, like the ag aggressiveness, the speed, all of that will help build the instruments behind it. Then, let's get it! <laughs> so you can have like a fake out here. And to be honest, like, there's not a lot of energy in this drop. This is a pretty empty buildup. So this is the first cause if there's a lot more instruments going at like faster rates faster paces in the background here included layered with these drums it would help a lot just a lot of energy is needed to be built so tension is built here you release the tension at the drop <laughs> now instead of releasing the tension at the drop we're like making this extended fake out almost Like, the pre-drop's supposed to be here. You're not actually supposed to be doing these. So, when you have the section for the pre-drop, the drop doesn't get delayed. Because right now the drop is delayed. So the energy is, like, shifted. And we don't get the full energy. You will be putting your pre-drop before the drop. Something like this. If you wanted to do a fake out, then you would start the fake out at the drop, the downbeat. And then you can keep on going. <laughs> now, even at that, you still need to fix this fake out because this is just like a random fake out. You, you need to do like a longer fake out, maybe four bars or a full two bars. It sounds like maybe one bar. Oh, we have the choir here too. Yeah, so you just want to experiment fake out uh, in, fake out, out, and see how much energy you can build. And you want to listen in full context. So if you're just listening here, you're not going to feel the energy of the buildup. So you have to keep feeling the energy of the buildup. You can see here, we even just press play. Very low energy. And this is supposed to be the build. So start layering lots more risers, build sweeps. <laughs> This is the best part, I think. It sounds very nice, minimal. But it's very quiet, you know? Things need to be brought louder to f get more energy. So these sections, though, feel very empty because, like, there's missing space. The offbeats, so the point twos and the point fours, are going to need to be filled with a sound. So, like... So basically in between the kicks are the offbeats and you need to have sounds. Like usually in house you're going to have the bass line really pumping, but the bass line here is just a sustained sub. There's not really any groove with the sub, it's more just there to fill frequency. So you really want to focus on getting people to dance with your bass line, the sub. You can't just really have it sustain like this. It's also gets pretty repetitive over time, the choir especially. So start to switch up the choir, maybe go lower octaves, uh, change the notes, and make sure that 
it doesn't get repetitive in any sections of the song. It'll help a lot. Shout. Cool. Good job. That's crit. For glory. Up next, we got Zwig with Ouchie. Simply and unconditionally. Let's get it done. Ouchie. That's ouchie. You know what it is. And that is a Zwig. If you want to go ahead and see him right here. Boom. Okay, cool. So we got some dubstep going on here. You already know what it is. This is cool. I'm glad to hear it. We do have a lot of sections that do need some more care. One of the main things is like frequencies that are low, mid range from 100 to 400 hertz. These could be problem frequencies if a lot of them stack on top of each other. This is like where mud builds up. A lot of your bases are dominant in this frequency spectrum range. And we need to make sure that you're EQing a lot of these other bases that are layered with like the main base. You really want to balance out your frequency so you don't have too much layered from like 100 to 400 hertz. You want to uh, pay really close attention to that 
little area. So let's listen here. So it kind of sounds a little bit too distorted, not enough clarity. You can tell there's not a lot of high end playing. It's more like it almost sounds muffled, you know? So what you need to do is start using compression, making sure that you're EQing before you use your compression. The compression will pull out these high frequencies that you need. And then you want to layer other bases that are playing high frequencies too, which will help make it louder, plus give it extra boost in frequencies that are much needed. Then all together, like the flow, you really want to work on like more call and response, practice call and response, different methods so that you can have a flow that keeps the audience interested. Because right now, the flow is getting very repetitive over time and we have to prevent any repetition. Remember, if we can predict what's going to happen next, that means we already know what's going to happen. There's going to be not as much energy. But if we can surprise them and keep a nice flow where something's always progressing, changing, keeping the listener engaged, that's what's going to keep people coming back and keep people dancing really hard also. <laughs> So we have kind of like the same flow going on from here to here. You want to work on like working in four bar phrases. And within your four bar phrase, you're going to have like a call, a response and a fill. Right now, it's just like a sustained bass playing over and over. So dy dynamically, it, our ears get kind of tired of the sound. But if there's silence involved and little spaces of silence where you can go back and forth, that's what's going to keep our ears like fresh with hearing all these frequencies because right now we're just getting blasted with the sub and our only breaks are these little breaks right here which is very very small so these things you want to look into also pre-drops are important you're building energy remember in your build up the pre-drop is a speck of silence for dynamics right it's loud and then it gets super quiet and then boom, you hit them with loud again. That's what makes the drop hit really hard. So remember these things. Plus when you're doing fake outs, you can do like f extra filters, remove a lot of frequencies, uh, like phone filters, for example, are really helpful. You would just get an EQ8, cut them like this, and you would automate the on and off. So you could turn it off, and then turn it on during these sections. Then you can even automate this to like start opening up over time. This fake out's pretty long, you see. You can go half of this and still get the effects you need. You don't really have to go this long unless you have something special planned. So I'd recommend maybe closing it half down. Bringing that drop in. Oh. This will help add more energy. Get things moving. You know what I'm saying? Fun times. Very nice, very nice. Okay, cool. That's ouchie. Up next, we got Vlad. With insomnia. Vlad Vulps? Vlad Vulpes? Insomnia? Let's run it. No sleep, no sleep. No sleep, no sleep. to seize any opportunity. 
Hold on, hold on. Damn, you did not have to do it to them like that, the blind. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Lots of amazing stuff to go over here. Dang, dude. You, you done took me to a different world, I have to say. I didn't hear anything that needed improvement, really. This is, this is amazing. Maybe this intro, how it's pitching down, maybe is the only thing that could be fixed. But honestly this doesn't even need to be fixed because that's subjective you know when we listen to everything everything is sounding cool nice there's so much energy it's really reminding me of of subtronics man and just like when i'm at his shows it's the way i'm dancing and how the energy around me is just intense and there's like so much melody and emotion and feeling with these bases and it's blended so well in your song specifically and in subtronic songs too and you guys both have found this balance and you're mixing it very well so i can turn it up really loud and get just completely lost this is really good the overall flow is sick man and you keep switching it up even in the second drop we gotta run this back real quick Red talks. we got the fast bases you know you're switching it up from all these Very nice little fill section. Uh, so in the background, you hear the brasses and stuff. He has like brasses, strings. He's all kinds of orchestral elements that are really just dynamically pushing everything. It's like moving up and down. It's acting as call and response. It's doing many things and it sounds so sick and in some sections you'll add more to it like you'll be adding to these strings we have nice neuro fills clean dynamics so we go from like quiet in the intro to super loud just overall there's a lot of good going on here dude this is the best thing i've heard from you no doubt you've been learning a lot obviously keep it up keep it balanced like this keep the art flowing stay in the zone man this is nice keep on pushing things out like this and keep people dancing feeling something that's all it's all about man very fun good job bro nice killing it Vlad, in for the win. Up next, we got Zach with On the Occasion of Your Scarlet Devotion. What a track name. This reminds me of metal albums and punk alternative. Let's get it. <laughs> 
Zach coming in with on the occasion of your scarlet devotion. Simply and unconditionally. We're in it. We're in it. I wrote some notes here. Overall, I'm liking what I'm hearing. The the bubbles the bubbles call really, really gets me. It's just like bubbles layered with don 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 and I don't know, I'm just feeling something crazy when I hear that. I'm really liking it. But we just got to make sure that after we hear this sick bubble call, we have to lead in to something really, you know, almost gentle. Because right now we're just blasting, blasting the people with volume. It's quite ear damaging, truthfully. I have to turn it down a lot for it not to hurt my ears. Negative two luffs is what it's at when we play the drop. And right now this is not you're not producing a genre that needs to be that loud right now this is like edm trap this is hybrid trap which has dubstep influenced in it it's not tear out it's not super loud extremely crazy rhythm so we need to make sure that we t tone this down you want to be around like negative six lefts maybe negative five for your master because right now you're pushing it too loud and it gets super loud when the sussies come so you want to pay attention to those. And then in general, you want to simplify the flow here. A lot is going on with these bases. Not too much call and response going on. So you could practice some call and response here. Also make sure that you incorporate some silence in your fills. You want to make sure that this, these things are not the only sections where it gets quiet. You want to have like some fills at the end of the phrases that kind of get quieter, dynamic shifts like that. When I say simplify the flow though, you need to work on quarter notes, like quarter note should be your main rhythm as it's progressing, and then you sprinkle in like fast triplets, you can do quarter note triplets or eighth note triplets, and then regular fast stuff. So like eighth notes, 16th notes, 30 seconds, mess with all those different things. Find a nice flow that you can repeat. Four bar phrase is what you want. You want a four bar phrase that you can dance hard to. And then that is repeatable. You can make small variations in that. 
This is important to keep us dancing strong here in this section. And then also, in general, the layering on the basses needs to be improved. So just layer each one of the basses, so like sustain, for example, that's pretty loud. That doesn't need to be layered, but the other basses, like the dubstep growls, the chugs, all those little want basses, layer those and make those nice fat commanding in the mix to kind of support the sustain because those will be your two main leads there then it looks like in these sections these are really nice sections here we kind of want to mix in these whisper voices either with eq or stuff kind of take out some highs and some low frequencies maybe only play the mids turn, turn them down use auto filters maybe to automate and you can blend those in with the main vocals because those main vocals are amazing. This vocal you have is great. So good job on that. This is really holding it down, kind of creating the whole art piece here. Yeah, so just make sure first thing, bring it down, not too loud. It'll be good. All right, nice. Good job. That's Zach. Up next, we got Go Dubs. Huh. We're back to back. Look at that. Cover art. Looking like Cadillac. Let's go. Back to back. Spice it. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're coming in with perfect, almost perfect mix town. Perfect loudness, I should say. We're at negative three lefts perfectly, negative 2.9 respectively. But most importantly, while we're this loud, I'm able to turn up my interface pretty loud and it's still like gentle on the ears. I'm still able to dance really hard and not get just blasted by harsh frequencies there's a tiny little bit of mud coming out this is kind of crazy too because like this grungy mid sound is the character of this track so you have to be super careful when removing 
like these mud frequencies because if you do too much you'll kill the track but if you do just a tiny bit in the areas that need it it will improve the track a lot and make it sound even more professional it'll give it more clarity you know less mud's always good remember mud's 100 300 hertz you want to like analyze these areas turn them down cut them out you want to experiment every song's different when it comes to this mix down so <laughs> energy super high the whole time i mean this makes me want to go somewhere and don't dance right now literally i want to i'm sorry but i might just leave this house right now and go find a dance party you know this is what <laughs> this makes me just dang dude all right let's check this out one more time hold up so notable things that are amazing sub pumping very loud layers of bases great stereo image filled properly mono stereo all these things are really important plus just flow i mean you kind of the f energy is so high that you kind of get lost in the sound and that's what we're trying to reach you know where you can't even think of how it sounds you can't even think of the structure and stuff because you're just getting hit with all these new sounds energies and it's pumping so it's a good i didn't hear anything that sounded repetitive over time which is amazing it does need to be extended it is actually it's 220 but the thing is is like the build up basically to our drop is basically half the song so this song would need to be twice as long kind of like this at almost four minutes if that's what i would recommend you know because this is just not enough dance time for us as soon as this ends we need some more dancing no dancing good job man killing it fire 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 up next we got extronics extronics coming in with the 2024 id7 seven is the best number 2024 is also a really great number that is this year and id is also really good too because i like id this should be good Then he dropped his Then he dropped his
Alex Charn is coming in hot. Tear out guns for the win with the 2024 ID number seven. You know what I'm saying? We also have some sick, amazing, like I, I really love these vocals. It, you know, this reminds me of Central C, that London grime, that hardcore shit, man. I'll just, I think it's off the chain, really. So I'm loving these vibes here. Only thing is, is it's really quiet. If you were to play this song in the club or at a festival, which is ideal, playing something at negative 10 lefts is super quiet. Blast and stuff. And you turn this on, it'll sound very quiet, which translate to low energy. And we can't have that happen. You can easily use compression and saturation to bring these things up to get in the single digits. We want to be like from negative eight to negative six lefts, right? And then you get a little bit louder during the buildup and then boom, your drop comes, which is coming in at negative four lefts, which is really nice. Great, perfect volume. But in general, the frequencies that are playing with your guns are not full. And because of that, they sound a little bit empty, a little bit weak compared to what they could sound. If you look at, if you listen to the guns, it's more like highs and lows and we're kind of missing a lot of the mids you can layer in a lot more layers for this gun to kind of take control of the mid frequencies as well so right now highs and lows are covered but we need more beef more grunge in that mid frequency to make it sound heavier like for real then most importantly dude this is supposed to be like a heavy dubstep tear out song it's kind of sounding like like almost, almost like a, <laughs> like a Fortnite tear out song. Like this, this little whoopty wamp on, on the off beats. It's like Super Mario types. Mario jump almost, or like a power up. Nevertheless, it's the opposite vibe of the guns and the energy so like your mind is trying to figure out what to feel what to dance to you're like getting like this weird offbeat thing that's making you dance that has like this timbre and energy but then you have these tear out guns that are now losing like their darkness because of this light wampy thing it's it's hard to explain what's going on but i really don't recommend you do that i recommend you keep the rhythm of it but replace it with something heavy something oh like chuggy, grungy, you know, and that will increase the energy dramatically of the drop. Overall, the guns are continuously changing, so guns are going hard. We just got to make sure that the guns are being supported well by the instruments around it. Otherwise, dude, otherwise, after that, it's going to be a banger. Looks like that's about it. Nice. Yeah, keep it up with the tear out guns. Get your layers on. We're sounding nice and loud. That's what we need. That's Extronix. Coming in with the 2024 ID7. Up next, we got Necrotic. Necrotic. Click clack. Ooh. I want to click clack. Hit it for the one time. I want to click clack. Maybe two times. <laughs>
clack, click clack, That's Click Click by Necrotic. That's how we get down with the Click Clack. Cool. So we have some sections here that need some improvement. I was happy to hear that you switched up, made it go fast right here. We have a nice little rhythm, wonky vibes. This is cool. I'm imagining being like in one of these forest stages, you know, just like cloaked up. You know what I'm saying? Listening to some of these wubbies. Now, when I'm in that zone, the basses sound cool, but the synths on top of it sound a little bit. It starts to get repetitive over time. Like the tones that we're hearing, the pitch can start to change over time. You use lower octaves with that sound. Maybe start to switch up the speed of it just so you can keep it spicy with your main lead here. In here, it's doing the same thing all the way. So you really need to work on like some call and response, have sounds at the beginning, preferably different sounds, and your whole response going. You could work in four bar phrases. So four bar phrases about this long here. So it'll be call response, fill at the end. And then this whole thing would be repeating so call response fill, and then that's going to keep the energy high, keep people moving over time. And once you get this easy call and response flow down, you can mess with different flows and try new call and response methods to keep people interested and find your sound. Right now it's really quiet in your drops, negative nine luffs. So you want to be like at least like negative six around there. You want to use more compression, more saturation on your individual tracks, on the groups and make these things louder. Remember when you turn things up, you turn up those mud frequencies to so use EQ to clean up frequencies, cut out lows, cut out some of those muds if you need to at 100. I, I'm usually cutting at like 175 nowadays. Just hit them with a cut at the 170. The majority of your bases should be like that to prevent mud and then some of them can be cut at 100 so that you can let in more of those mud frequencies through. You just gotta find a good balance. Also, keep in mind, the sections of when it's just a sub and vocals, it's going to be very mono. So not a lot of sounds are in the left and right, which is the stereo sides. We need to pay attention to these because it sounds pretty empty without this section being filled. So we're talking about the stereo image now from mono to stereo. So just keep that in mind. We want these sections to be full and not empty. And yeah, dude, that's going to help get things louder, speed up the flow. This is going to add a lot more energy. This is going to help. So I recommend these things. Otherwise, it's a good idea. I really like how there's a theme with the click clack. I like how there's a vocal in it. If it didn't have those things, this would be... It would be much, it would be a whole different thing. It really would. So it's really good for you to be using the vocals, the best instrument in the world. Our voice you can do everything. You can do everything. Are we cooking? Who is this? Who is this? Good job. Necrotic. Click, click. Check out the cover art. Boom. Up next, we got Are We Cooking by Snasta. Let's go. Let's get it done.
Oh, yeah. Yeah, boy, that's some big boy. That's a big boy. Are we cooking? I think we're cooking. I think we're cooking up a little bit of spice. We're cooking up a little bit of steak, Angus beef. That's nasty coming in hot. Dude, we have some heavy rhythm. It's pretty loud rhythm, to tell you the truth. Negative three rhythm. So, I don't know if you were here earlier, but I mentioned we're at negative three, and I can turn it up a lot on my interface. We're able to hear it on Go Dub Song. But right now, I'm unable to do the same, unfortunately. I can only go about half the volume before my ears start just busting down. You know, they start screaming for help. Basically, lots of harsh frequencies are starting to build up over time. So, like the opposite of the mud. Now we're paying attention to the harsh frequencies. There's this thing called the Fletcher Munson curve, which you guys can look up. You can see how our ear perceives frequencies differently. Like low frequencies and high frequencies, we perceive them at different volumes. So it's important to understand that when you're mixing down your tracks and layering. Once you start layering a lot of things or adding a lot of compression, a lot of saturation, a lot of loud racks, things like this, it's going to bring up all these harsh frequencies and we just got to turn them down with the EQ. We got to make sure we pay attention to them so they don't stack up too much. It's about finding that balance. So that's what you want to do for sure with like your high frequencies. The lows are just pumping really nice lows. If this was in the club, it'd probably sound crazy. And then Overall, the flow, you're switching it up over time, over and over and over, and it just feels really nice. It's it's really refreshing. Because, you know, you don't want the rhythm to stay the same the whole time. We got some fast stuff here, but you bring in, like... Yeah, okay. So right here. So see how the sub is all sussed? You can keep this running a little bit. Maybe make a whole phrase, a whole four bar phrase, some of this sussy. Because like the whole song, we've been listening to the regular sub, but you introduce this new timing of the sub. It sounds nice, new, fresh. You can keep that running a little bit more and kind of spread it out throughout these phrases and it will really add more energy. It sounds sick. I was doing the bass face kind of the whole time while listening to this, so that's a really good sign. Otherwise, keep it stacking, man. Maybe these uh these are a little bit too empty over here though, man. Uh make sure you try to set a theme here. Set a theme. Find a vocal, find a lead, something that people can attach to, something that people can come back to. That'll help. Alright. Good job, Snasta. Sick. Up next, we got a dredge pull. Dude, we just have it stacked today, man. You guys are coming in hot. Dredge coming in with circulation of psychosis. Aww. What's going on? I don't know. Oh, 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 
Jesus. Wow. <laughs> okay, that dreadful coming in super hot with circulation of psychosis. Wow. I am if I am kind of in a circulation of psychosis right now. The psychosis is circulating around my brain. There's so much going on here. So much emotion. There's like so much storytelling happening. One thing that I love is some of these bases like shine so brightly in the mix that they start to sound like a monster is, is coming out. Let's check it. Hear how the bass is moving. It's like basically talking. And once you have the theme set over here and these basses come in just like moving like this, it's pretty crazy, man. And I, I really appreciate how you're bringing life to the song like this sick literally <laughs> stuff like this is very unique because <laughs> you never really heard stuff like this before and overall that is the goal whenever you sound unique people can attach to you much easier this is the like the start of a brand being able to keep a sound like this and progress it and evolve it it doesn't seem like you're running out of ideas <laughs> Call and response wise, so much movement going on. When I say call and response, that's main, mostly what I'm talking about, right? Getting movement in your drop. You want synths to talk to each other, go back and forth. You want basses to go back and forth. You want your layers to go back and forth. You want volume to go back and forth, loud to quiet. So when you have this much movement going on at the same time, then your brain is just like, okay, I'm just here for the ride. And that's what's happening here. You get lost in the track. Yeah, melodically, harmonically, we're hitting those peaks. That's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of emotion, a lot of feeling, lots of energy, lots of heaviness. It's mixed well. And then on top of this, we have this really unique kick acting like a heartbeat. So cool. But this this is probably the thing that needs to be, the only thing that needs to be fixed in this song. This kick is just like so loud compared to everything. You should be like filtering it with the auto filter or using an EQ, turning it down movement over time with this kick this is the only thing that doesn't sound professional in this track is how loud this kick is compared to everything that's around it in these moments of time right simple auto filter a little bit of turn down can fix that but you want to find a good balance still leave it nice and big you don't want to turn it down too much and the idea of it like acting as a heartbeat too is 
adds a lot of feeling, a lot of craziness. So good, good job. Super sick. Very nice. Up next, we got a Monk's Falling remix by Three Amigos. The Tree Amigos, sorry. This is a Tree Amigos. What tree has the friends under this tree? We shall never know until we know. That's a trio amigos coming in with a remix for the monks for the fouling. Now, unfortunately, I haven't heard this song beforehand, so I don't know exactly like what you added and what monks added, you know what I mean? But I can kind of tell. I mean, some of these sections, for example, like this. <laughs> You have lots of different types of basses coming at you. So there's really not any cohesion going on in here. We need these things to blend together. Almost sound like they're in a family, like they live in the same house. You know, it's like upstairs, you got that cool wonk. Downstairs, you got that big chuggy. And then father over there is that tear out gun that blends well with the wonk and the chuggy. You know, they all have to like live in a little family. If they are family, then they'll be able to grind hard keep it flowing. Right now it's kind of sounding like different basses coming at different times. They don't sound uh, like they're matching and we really need that to happen because when they sound like this, you have different energies coming at you and we need to like not pay attention to all these different new sounds but rather get lost in the sound and start with simple flow, call and responses four bars you have one call something to start it off like a growl like rah 
and then boom, you get into your response, which is the main bass. So for a little bit, you go like, ra, da, 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 da. And then at the end of that phrase, the end of the four bars, you set up a fill. It's like a drum fill, vocal fill. And that could be the basis of your call and response. Easy four bars. One main thing that we need to focus on here is the speed that we're dancing at during the drops. Let's check this. All right, so look at me. So basically, if we're making it in 140, we could be dancing in 140 like this. Boom, 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 boom. There's two ways to dance, right? Boom, 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 boom. Or boom, 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 boom. So you could dance in half time and full time. The best songs start with the full time dance, and then if you get lazy, you could just dance in half time, right? But some songs, you can only dance in half time, and there's not like a the full-time dance flow. Now when we get to the So you see me right here dancing like this? This is about 70 beats per minute, maybe 75. When really I should be dancing in the 140, 150. But you see, like, this is a lot of energy right here. But this song is not giving me that energy to dance to. And that's a big problem. We need to be able to dance to that full energy that you're producing at. It's real important that you don't accidentally have a song that's 70 beats per minute when it's really supposed to be in 140. So keep those things in mind. These are really important. Timing, flow, energy is everything when it comes to dance music, electronic dance music, right? When you're making music though, like let's say the drop was full time, you could break it down half time for the breakdown. And in your song, you can mess with half time, regular time and metal. They do it all the time. They'll go triple time. You know what I mean? The drummer will just go insane. So mess with different time. You just don't keep it in 70, the whole song. That is what I'm saying here. Otherwise, those are the main things you got to work on. You really want to make sure people are dancing a little bit more to this. And the overall vibe here is really cool. But the vocals, they stay on. And over time, they start to get repetitive. So you can mess with different like lower octaves on the vocals, chopping up the vocals, doing different things with the vocals, and it'll make a... A cool difference. Really nice difference. That's the Tree Amigos. Nice. Good job. Up next, we got Spaced Out with the early WIP. That's Spaced Out. Early whip. What he got. Let's run it. That is spaced out coming in with the early WIP. We have some energy in here. Let's check this. The only thing is, is we have a lot of competing frequencies, you know, so we can't even really hear or focus on the main sick, like almost resurrect lays chugs, those main bases. 
because there's a sussy playing in the background that's basically playing those same frequencies so it's competing it's adding like mud there that sussy should be higher frequencies or you would have to change the bass so that it is a higher bass that blends with the sussy either one Yeah, overall it's just uh, too loud as well. We're coming at like negative 2.5 luffs. And a lot of the frequencies are harsh, so make sure that you're using a lot of EQ before and after all this compression, saturation, loud racks. You're going to want to do like a lot of cleaning if you're going to be doing all these layers and all these like super big competing frequencies too so you want to pay attention to the stereo image mono and stereo when cleaning you can also free up space that way and then use your eq to cut at like 175 the most of the time on most things and make sure that sub is nice and clean right now the sub is almost lost in the mix because everything is so loud compared to it The idea is good though. This will have a lot of energy once it is mixed properly and the sustains are fixed so that they're not competing with the main chuggy bass. And these buildups are really empty, so just make sure these buildups are adding a lot of tension. It's really important that you build tension here because this will make the drop sound harder. So right here, build the tension in the buildup over here. This is where the sussies are going on. Got to make sure we clean up the frequencies, use EQs, change the frequencies altogether by using a new different sustain or use frequency shifters. Overall, that sustain is very like low mid bass heavy. And then that is about it, it looks like. Okay, cool. Good job. Good energy. That's what we need. That'll be some big stuff. That's some lost. That's like Lost Lands energy. You know, when I went there, that's we're dance to pull. Let's got to get down. Keep it going. Keep it going. Nice. We have a monarch next with Simbad. Unmixed. Unmixed. Uh oh. That's uh oh. Don't you see? This is what happens when you decide to play God. Sinbad, parentheses, unmixed. It's a, 
it's a small little shame that this is unmixed. You know, we're at the point where, like, we have the technology and all the tools available where you can mix things. Mixing is very, very, very simple compared to sound design and composition and actually making something dope. Mixing is really just layering things. It's making things loud. It's paying attention to the stereo image, compression, saturation. If something is really quiet like this at like negative 24 luffs, it is like way too quiet. Keep this in mind. Podcasts on the internet. Those are at negative 15 lefts. So if you're quieter than the voices on a podcast, that's a problem. You know, this isn't old school classical music. You have to at least get it loud enough to a point where like energy is being built. And you don't want to have someone turn it up really loud on their speaker and then boom, you hit them with a drop, which is way louder than the intro because then they'll have to turn it down. You don't want them to be adjusting their volume really at all when someone's listening to the track. Uh, mixing and mastering engineers, like that's kind of an old profession. I went to school for that and I became a audio engineer and this is stuff that we used to do in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. Now we have these computers with like really fast processors and amazing tools where we can mix and master like within an hour or like in 15 minutes, you can do these things. And I really recommend that you start learning EQ, compression and saturation first. Those are your main tools in mixing. And then signal flow, like I have templates with buses. You can look at my template, learn routing and signal flow. So you know how to send your signals based on frequency, lows, mids, highs, and arrange them in a way so that you can get them really loud and keep them clean at the same time. You'll notice when you get things really loud, it starts to sound muddy and not good and not clean. So that's kind of the trick with mixing and mastering. Getting it loud while sounding clean at the same time. That's the goal. And the drop. We have like this bass here, main bass lead. And if you look at the left side, we're in the single digits, negative eight. This is good that we're getting louder. We do want the basses to sound full though. It sound heavy. And the way you'll get this is having a nice, big, loud, solid sub. That's like 70% of the work. And then the mid basses on top of it have to be layered, maybe two, three layers of something nice and beefy. Right now there's another layer playing in the background. It's kind of wide. And then you got the one in the middle. But the one in the middle needs to be layered a lot more. And you can keep the one that's wide as well. Let's keep on layering. And in general, just call and response. You know, finding flow within four bar phrases. That's going to help a lot with the movement and energy of the song. Call, response, fill within your four bars. That's going to help a lot. So you kind of just like throw us into your bases and really there should be kind of like a setup something to introduce the phrase the main idea of the phrase and then like a fill to end it off and then that would repeat and that would kind of be the flow song arrangement you can go with cool nice i see that you have some ideas in your head though it's really important that you got those down just keep it up learn your mixing Learn how to layer, learn your tools, and you'll be on there. I didn't ask for an SS Monarch with Simban. Next, we have Widened Eye. No, we actually don't. We have Doji Wix, a trap demo. 2024, 315. 315. 2024, trap demo, which I know about the flow. Coming back, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
That's the Trap Demo 2024 315, if you know what I'm saying. And that is from the Doji Wicks. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sorry, man. Doji Wicks, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so with this Trap Demo, we got a lot going on here. Nice, fast energy right away, which is appreciated. We're building good energy, build tension here. Now the thing is, is like, when we get to the drop though, the timing and the flow is just like thrown out the window because we're building it up and we're expecting to dance at the drop, right? And when we dance, we're dancing basically to the snare. The snare is what is the rhythm. So basically, a snare is supposed to hit here, and you don't give us the snare. And it's just an 808. And then our first snare comes in over here. So basically, you remove the most important part of the song which is the first snare during your drop because that's what we're basically dancing to you know that's what we like headbang to so because you delayed the snare all the energy that you built up here basically gets thrown out the window and we start from scratch and the energy just drops down low and then we have to like rebuild the energy over time which becomes an issue so it's really important you keep that snare in there and on top of that the snares cannot be quiet like this. Listen to how quiet and tiny the snare is. So you have background snares playing over here. Very, very quiet. Main snare right here. If you compare that to the synth that's playing, it is a dramatic difference. That synth is actually way too loud, bringing out a lot of harsh frequencies. And then the drums are like super small and quiet. So the mix is really unbalanced. You want to get that synth down and make your drums bigger. The kick, the snare, those need to be big, beefy, and commanding because that's what people are dancing to. The 808 is the only thing that has some beef to it, but everything else, all the other drums with it needs to be beefed up. Add saturation, compression, that's how you're going to do that. Layers as well and sample choices, everything. Some of the samples may need to be improved. But the main thing here is like, find a nice simple flow with the synth. Let your drums do the talking. Sprinkle in a little bit of a complicated flow with the synth. And dial the harsh frequencies back on the synth as well. It's going to help a lot. For show? Sure. For show. Sure. I'm next. Wait. Did I miss this? Let me get this real quick. Keep that one for the one time, for the one time, for the one time. All right, cool. Sick. So, up next we have LMDC official with the ID Lulu. I don't know. I kind of like it. Parentheses, parentheses out. Let's make sure this isn't being warped. It is. Cancel that warp, and let's call it a day. Run it. <laughs> All right, cool. We got the ID Lulu. I don't know. I kind of like it. That's cool that you kind of like this. There's a lot of nice sound design going on here. Lots going on. But the thing is, is we are not having a lot of energy in this drop for one reason. And one of the main reasons is the bass, like the sub and the synth are playing the same thing. Like dun, 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 the whole time. <laughs> So dun 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 dun. So because of this playing the whole time and not getting a break from it, 
We're kind of losing the energy in the bases and the guns. And there really isn't much flow going on. It's really just these sounds blasting the whole time. Because of that, it gets repetitive. It gets really predictable. Energy starts to go down over time. These are things we don't need happening at all. So switch up the flow of that bass and that synth. Add some more silences so you can have some nice dynamic shifts. And work in four bar phrases because you want to be able to have people dancing a lot in that four bar phrase, and then the next four bars they can keep dancing to the similar first four bars, and so on. Keep it up though. I see you have these ideas in your brain. You got to just bust them out, learn your tools, learn that flow, reference some tracks too if you need to, so you can see what the pros are doing, how they do their call and response and flow, and stuff like that. All right, nice, cool. Next is Wide and Die with Count Two. Interesting, it's called Country. Hmm. All right, I need to actually go to the restroom real quick. I'll be right back and we're gonna on with the last two. And let's get ready to feedback time. Up next, we got country, aka count two, a wide and die. Run it. <laughs> As a horse, man, that's country, man. If y'all don't know country, <laughs> that's country. You know what I'm saying? We got horses in here. We got that guitar strum. We do have some womps and wubs intertwined in between as well. So these wompies. So I kind of have like the quarter note just playing this whole time. So like the call and response that's happening in the background, how the sussies are moving back and forth really goes unnoticed because the main rhythm is like the uh, 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 uh. So over time in this four bars, if you're just playing that this whole time, it gets very repetitive, very low energy. <laughs> it 
And at this point, it's kind of just like sounds playing. There's nothing really to dance to here. We need these basses to be talking to each other, not just playing after another. And once again, call and response, you want to have something set this off. It shouldn't be the response. So like something slower, right? If all this is going fast, you need this section to be slow. It's like, bam. Oh. Then when we get back here, you do the call again. Something slow. That little switch up will make everything less repetitive and add way more energy and more movement and danceable rhythms. You don't want to just blast them with the main rhythm the whole time or else it'll get very predictable. If we can predict what's going to happen next, then that's not going to be adding energy. That's going to be decreasing in energy. So you keep that going on a very long time here and a very long time here. So you want to change up rhythms, change up speeds, go from slow to fast. Make them call response patterns, my dog. This is a cool idea with the country. You know, you got the nice guitars, nice little horses. That's how we set a theme. You know, you've set a theme here. Now you just have to take that theme to the max. You can layer your webs too. Okay, if you compare the sussy with the womps the womps sound weaker and not as full so you want to layer those as well just so you can get those beefy cool so once again rhythm even though you're changing the sounds here it's not enough for you to change the repetition if you're playing the same rhythm won't 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 the whole time that's what we're going to attach to. So everything else around it is just, you know, not doing too much of a difference. We have to fix that rhythm first. I that's about it. That's the country time. Up next, we got a boss player, top dog, Tang. With going easy. He's, he's not going hard right now, my guys. He's going easy. Oh, I guess we are about to go a little bit hard. Dang.
hang coming in with this spicy, spicy, spicy. Anchor. Huh. Going easy. More like going hard. Oh, dang, dang, coming in. Dude, this is, this is impressive because I've never heard anything like this from you. You're usually making almost like a certain type of drop, right? But dude, right here, we're going into straight Wook range. This reminded me of Liquid Stranger vibes, Wakan vibes, just straight <laughs> zooming. Without that special K, you just on. You on, you on, you on. Okay. The work, your sub work, the amount of movement, the amount of pitch bends, and like, holy cr The sub alone is moving so much that that alone is beautiful. Over time, you're kind of like opening, like filtering in and out, right? And frequencies open over time. And these sections, they don't open as high as the... Yeah, a little shame. But the thing is, it's like when they're opening, it's like at the peak of the frequencies being fully open, it starts to sound like a little noisy, like a little harsh. And with this type of song, with all the wubby vibes, it's like almost gentle. The frequencies are kind of like melting into you and forming you, morphing you. And when it gets a little bit too harsh and a little bit too noisy, it starts to kind of be a little bit... Um, unpleasant to the ear you know after we're like these little sections right here so it's like fully opened right here and right here it's like gentle it's like at this very peak like that's really the only time it's starting to sound a little bit rough to the ear but the general idea like how it's moving and stuff is critical so we need to make sure that you just find that perfect balance of eq and frequency this thing is really dope i was able to get lost in this easily there's not much here that needs to be fixed because it's so unique definitely make more stuff like this man it's so cool to see you branching out and making something wookie and wubby and alive the amount of movement here makes these bases feel alive and it's just mm, yummy. Good job, dude. Sub going in. Man, you guys go hard, man. I gotta say, thank you for everything. Live stream 50, 5 0. We get it done. Let me know what you guys want to see up next in all my videos. Lots of stuff planned. Crazy, crazy amount of stuff planned. Like, comment, subscribe. You guys are awesome. Feedback stream in the description. Go to the Discord. Submit your track for next week. Actually, it's Easter, I think, on Sunday. I think we're going to have to do the Sunday after next week, my guys. You guys are spicy. Keep it real. Stay fresh. Love y'all. See you later. Peace.